This morning, the WDBJ news team is back on the air one day after a gunman murdered two young journalists on live TV. Now, that shooting sent shockwaves across the country. CBS News' Cara Finstrom is live in the Satellite Center with the very latest. Cara? Well, a grief counselor did join the morning crew there this morning, and journalists from other stations were brought in to help with the broadcast. But many of the crew said they wanted to be there themselves to help honor their murdered colleagues. Together, they joined for a moment of silence. It was yesterday around this time that we went live to Allison Parker and photojournalist Adam Moore. They were out in the field. A story was like so many others that they did all the time, reporting on our hometowns. Please join us now in a moment of silence. Allison Parker and Adam Moore were part of our family here. With heavy hearts, much of the morning crew at the CBS station in Roanoke returned to work without two members of their team. It's unfair and it's just unimaginable that we're not going to see their smiling faces and hear them laughing. Reporter Allison Parker and photographer Adam Ward were ambushed and killed live on the air Wednesday morning by a disgruntled former employee. The father of one of the victims, Andy Parker, says his daughter died doing what she loved. It's hard to get your arms around it and, and realize or, or try and make sense of why it happened. Authorities say the gunman was a fellow journalist, Vester Flanagan. He went by the name Bryce Williams while reporting for the station. The 41-year-old was let go two years ago. Before killing himself yesterday, authorities say he went on a Twitter rant, alleging Allison had made racist comments and saying Adam complained about him to HR. The general manager at WDBJ said Flanagan had to be escorted out of the building by police when he was let go. He also called him difficult to work with. In a 23-page document faxed to ABC News, Flanagan reportedly described himself as a human powder keg, motivated by the Charleston shooting massacre. He also expressed admiration for the man who killed 32 people at Virginia Tech in 2007. President Obama called Wednesday's shooting a moment to reflect on. I think it's one more argument for why we need to look at um, you know, how we can reduce gun violence in this country. Prayer vigils are planned in the community in the coming days. The husband of the other shooting victim, the woman being interviewed, says she was shot in the back but was able to get up and walk to the ambulance herself. He says that she is now in fair condition and improving. Reporting live here from the Satellite Center, Cara Finstrom, CBS 2 News.